I'm Tejas Kumar, and I'm a developer relations consultant. Sometimes what that entails is being invited to speak about DevRel at various events. Yesterday, I was on a Twitter space, or I should say an X space, talking about DevRel, um, which I think here, this is the this is the post, um, which, you know, I, I like that they put the title as Universal Head of DevRel. Um, I am the Universal Head of DevRel. Um, but in this space, I was asked a question of how um, can a DevRel employee or DevRel professional um, successfully convince developers to use the product of whomever it is product they're working for. Um, and I, I said, my answer to this question was, that's not DevRel. Right? DevRel isn't convincing developers to use a certain product or tool. Instead, it's just telling developers, hey, just so you know, this tool is available for you. Here's how it works. Here's the problems it solves. Here's what it's good for. Here's what it's not good for. DevRel is forming a relationship um, based on valuable information. And that valuable information isn't necessarily within agenda. I'm not trying to convince you to do anything. That is the job of sales or marketing or something else. Um, if I want to have a good relationship with somebody, I, I just sh give them tools that maybe are useful, maybe are not, and say, hey, just so you know, this is available to you. Um, and in case they're interested in how it works, happy to teach you that as well. But persuading, convincing, um, in, in stronger language, manipulating into doing things or using things. I don't know that that's necessarily um, DevRel. And so um, with that, I want to use that as kind of an intro into today's video because I want you to know about this thing. I want to talk to you today about a tool that I think is pretty cool. Um, it's intended to be probably uh, a tool that you're aware of, maybe that you use, but I don't want to get you to use it. I just want you to know that it's available to you. Um, I love tools that make large classes of problems disappear. Some of you um, may know that I'm a huge fan of a tool called Hasura. Um, I'll put a link under the like button for those of you who don't know it, but Hasura is amazing. Um, and I say this, there, there's no business relationship with Hasura. We, we don't, they don't pay me for any of this. I just, I love the product because um, it takes away so much work. It does the work of an entire team for free. It's open source. Um, so how it works is you point Hasura to a database. You just give it a connection string and automatically with zero effort, it will give you a full API um, over GraphQL. It will give you an event listener such that when something happens in your database, you can trigger webhooks, etc. cetera. It will give you full role-based access control. It will handle authentication authorization through JWT um, or webhooks just out of the box. It's a tremendous tool uh, and one that blows me away every single time. Because if I'm building a product, I don't want to spend the time creating an API and thinking about security and all of this. I just want that done. And Hasura does that. It's a fantastic tool. However, one of the limitations of Hasura is you do need to find a database at which to point it. Um, and, you know, that can be a little bit time consuming. Do I go with MySQL? Do I do go with Postgres? Um, there's many decisions to be made there and not likely because it's a database. Um, I, I want to talk to you about a tool today that isn't necessarily a competitor. To Azura, but does similar things. It solves an entire class of problems, particularly the backend side of the world, um, in almost entirety, focusing, allowing me rather to focus on building products. And this is a tool I want to make sure you're aware of in case you know you want to build a product fast and don't want to have to deal with this. The tool I'm talking about is called Keel. It's K-E-E-L, um, Keel.so. Here I can show you the, the website. The business-minded backend designed for scale. Um, lots of lots of words here. What I want to do in our time together is literally just show you how it works, what it does, make sure you know its capabilities, or at least the top contour of its capabilities, and then you know you can explore yourself if you're interested. Um, they're in private beta, so um, you'd have to request access, but I'm sure they'll give it to you. Um, so why am I excited about Keel? Um, for starters, it's it's pretty nuts because you write one file, literally one file. They call it the Keel schema. Um, it does have its own schema definition language, SDL, but it's pretty close to GraphQL. Um, you, you write a schema defining your data types or models. So I have um, a user, a post. You can maybe describe how they're related if, if they are. And, and finally, you expose them as an API. On the models, you also define operations, things you can do on them, things like um, get a list of things or get one thing or update. So CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete. And you just declaratively write this stuff. It's all type safe. There's a VS Code extension. And then um, when you git push, your backend just exists out of this one file, including fine-grained role-based access control, data storage, um, 
operations, so CRUD operations. You can even define custom functions like serverless functions to do more stuff. It's, it's kind of nuts all from one file. And so I want to show you around a little bit um, just so you know that this is available to you. And I'd encourage you if you want to go check it out after, um, do so. All the relevant links and things will be under the like button as usual. Um, before we get into it, I want to invite you uh, to subscribe to the channel. If you, if you don't already, it's a great way to support me um, as, as I continue to make videos like this. Uh, also, if you drop a like and share it with your social media friends, um, I'd, I'd appreciate that. All right. So with that, let's get into Keel. So if I come here, what I want to do is I want to start at GitHub and make a repo. So I'll make a repo called Keel to do um, just a little to do app, nothing special. Um, public, sure, all of this is fine. So I'll create this repo. And as soon as it's created, I want to clone it. So I'll open my terminal and I will um, git clone this. And that's fine. It warned me that I cloned an empty repo. And what I want to do is touch schema.keel. Okay. And I will open this in the editor. We have literally no file. We just have schema.keel. Now, what can I do with this schema? I can define my entire backend here, including authentication and so on. Um, let's just walk and talk, so to speak. We'll, we'll write it and then we'll narrate as we're writing. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is define a model. This is a to-do app, so we'll do something like to-do. Um, none of this, this is all wrong, but on it we can say we have some fields. On those fields we have some operations that we can do um, and so on and so forth. So let's define some fields. Um, it should have a label that is of type, look at this, it's fully type safe, this thing. So I want it to be text, um, is done to be a Boolean type, maybe done at, and we'll say this is a timestamp. And lastly, an owner with an identity. This identity type um, is a built-in type with Keel. It's, it's basically a user um, with ID, with email, whatever, depending on how you do users. But it's just, there's an implicit internal mechanism for this stuff. So we just say identity, okay? Um, Cool, that's fine. What can I do with it? Well, I want to list with the name of the operation being get all to do's. Um, that's it. Just like this, I've created a, a list operation. It's just going to get all to do's, kind of nuts. Um, what else? I can um, create, sure, um, add to do, but it's it's a bit red because I need to give it arguments. Um, the, the error even says um, create actions must accept all required fields that have no default value. So. These are required fields. They have no default value. So we can actually say this is, maybe it's never done, it's optional. Um, the default value for this is false. It's not done by default. So now this has an implicit value from um, the auth service. This is the only thing without a default value. So how I pass it in is I say with label. And again, this is type safe, etc. But now it's still complaining because the owner field is not set as part of the create operation. I need to set it using this directive. So that's fine. I'll do it. So we'll set and we'll say owner is context dot identity. And it's all type safe and so on. But what this maybe it's to do owner. Okay. So what this is doing is as soon as I create a to do, it's just going to say, hey, the per the user who made the to do owns the to do. This CTX is an auth context, has other things like is authenticated, headers, etc. Okay. So we're just setting that. Um, and, you know, just for giggles, we'll do a delete, remove to do, and we'll give it an ID as an argument. So we've, we've, we've defined create delete operations in our thing. The last thing we need to do is expose this. So we'll create an API with name web, and we'll expose these models, which is just to do. That's it. So in this schema, we've defined a data type that is a to do. We've defined some operations like list, create, delete. And we've defined some, whoa, there's an insect. We've defined some, um, wild. We've defined some um, more um, API exposure, okay? So that, that's kind of what this is. So um, how do we deploy it? Well, we get push, so we'll say add initial schema. And we'll um, get push, so we'll come here, get push. Cool, we pushed. Um, and now let's go make the project. So if we go to Keel, we'll do a new project from existing code. Um, we'll continue. We'll say this is called to do, to do. Um, enter should work. That's a bit of an accessibility faux pas, Keel team, if you're watching. Um, but we'll create with the mouse. Um, we'll authorize GitHub and link the repo we just made. So to do. 
and that should be it. So now it's going to provision a staging environment. There's our commit. Um, and it's going to deploy our one file, this one file, um, <laughs> to a backend with a database, with functions, with a runtime, etc. Kind of nuts how all of this becomes a full backend. Um, the deploy runtime, I think, takes maybe about 20 seconds to start, but gets faster over time. It's been my observation. Okay, so it's done. It's live, as this indicator says. So um, what can we do with it? Well, if we go to the database, we can see that we have some tables, to do and identity. If we go to the schema visualizer, we can actually see our schema. We can see that we have to do's and the owner is related to this identity table with these columns. We didn't write this. Um, this is implicit in Keel. We get some monitoring so we can see all the requests and everything. But anyway, let's go look at the API Explorer. What we have is documentation for everything we wrote without any ex extra effort. It's kind of nuts. We can get all to do's, add to do, remove to do, etc. Um, we can even play with it. So if we can come here and write down a query, get all to do's, and again, this is type safe because it's GraphQL, and we can get the label and we run it. It says, oh, permission denied. You're not authorized to access this action. That's because I'm not authenticated. So what we'll do is we'll authenticate me. I'll create a user if a user doesn't exist. We'll say tages at tages.qa. We'll submit, um, no. And now I'm authenticated. Um, also, if we go to the database, look in the identity table, boom, a user exists with a password you won't know, etc. Keel issued it. Uh, so let's go back and run that query again. And I'm still not authorized. In fact, if I hard reload, I'm still not authorized. You might be thinking, what's happening here? Well, Keel is really secure because nothing is accessible by default. You need to manually intentionally expose things. Um, it has a very tight permission system, which if you've built things at scale, especially you will come to know this is a, is, a, is a true blessing. So how do we give permissions to the list endpoint? Well, or the list operation? Well, if we come to the editor, um, what we can do is we can say, we'll open up here and say permission. Um, and this is kind of like a function call. And what we want to do is um, for this expression, it's permitted to do this. And we want to say that the context is authenticated. That's it. So if you're authenticated, you should be able to get all to do's. Um, small change to the schema. We'll update this and we'll say authenticate list. Okay. And we'll push that. So we're, we're doing a git push. And as soon as the git push is done, we go back to our builds and we should see it's building. Fantastic. This should take about 20, 30 seconds. Um, and then we'll have a new API, just like that, just iteratively, um, which I think is pretty awesome. I've done zero AWS, zero backend, zero anything, right? So it's it's good. Um, let's go to the API Explorer and see if we can run that query. And indeed we can, we, we get nothing though. So let's maybe do a mutation and add some query. So add to do, and then we'll get back the ID, okay? We need to give it something. So it needs an input, which is um, to do. And we'll maybe add with an argument here. To do is um, add to do input. Um, did I forget how to use GraphQL? What's the matter? Unknown argument. Did I, I really forgot how to use GraphQL? Um, gosh, me. Input, okay, so there we go. Input is to do, to do. And we will get the ID of the created thing. Okay, now we need to give it a little input. So we'll say to do is label, um, smile at camera. We'll save. I'm not authorized. Again, keep in mind, it's supposed to be safe. So let's give myself permission. Um, what I'm gonna do is come here and just say I need to be authenticated to create a to do. Um, so this is a bit redundant. So what we can do more globally instead of per endpoint is just add a permission block here. So we can say permission and we can say um, expression is ctx dot is authenticated. So for everything here, you need to be authenticated and we need to also pass in. Okay, but what can you do here? Um, we can, we can, for example, say 
the actions you can do are, are list, create. So for list and create, you need to be authenticated. It's a more global way. So we'll say refactor auth, git push, and go back to the browser. So now if we go back to the builds, we have refactor auth. It's apparently queued. Um, I'm probably placing some load on this. But it's already deploying. I love how all of this kind of is so fast. Okay, it's live. So if we go back now, try to run that query again, we should be able to create it and we got an ID. So now if we go back and list all the to-dos, get all to-dos, um, edges, node, label, um, pretty print that, we should get smile at camera. If we go look at the database, uh, we actually have it, smile at camera. It's also assigned to an owner. So we can take the security one step ahead, one step further, and say I can only get my to-dos, not all to-dos, right? So we can go here and this list get all to-dos. What we can do is we can say um, where to-do.owner is equal to the context identity. And this will only get my to-dos. And again, I can say enforce um, auth federalization. Okay. And now it will only get me my to-dos. That is the to-dos where I'm the owner. But look at that. We did so much. We wrote one file here just to just for posterity. Let's go to GitHub again. Um, our entire backend is this. That's it. Um, it has modeling for, for all the operations. It has security. It has authenticate. All of this for one file. I don't even have to think about where to deploy my database. Do I use AWS? Do I use Azure? Heal. They, 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 everything. I write a file, declarative, type safe. It exists. I think this tool is tremendous because look at the progress. Um, and I'm eager to play with it more. I'm actually toying with the idea of building a little SaaS product, similar to like Lanyard, for those of you who know what that is, um, just to see how it works. Um, but I'm, I'm blown away by how quick and how with minimal effort I can build APIs, backends um, that are so capable. And I hope you um, found this video useful and you're able to also play with it. Um, if you, again, um, if you, it's a private beta, so if you want to request access, links are under the like button. Um, I'll put a link to the GitHub repo under the like button. And I keep saying like button because I want you to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell. Um, but with that, thank you for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.